Jeff, right? No, with me. Live from San Francisco, California, it's The Cube at VMworld 2014. Brought to you by VMware, Cisco, EMC, HP, and Nutanix. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. We're back, welcome to San Francisco, everybody. We're here in Moscone South. As you walk in the lobby, check out the right-hand side, the Cube is here. VMware's done a fantastic job. They do every year, really setting us up. Uh, it's a really a lot of action going on. We're going to do an analyst segment right now. I'm joined by my co-host here, Stu Miniman, and David Floyer. You're in the hot seat, so thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Thank you. Stu, before we get into uh, Floyer's piece, we're going to talk a little bit about orchestration. Every year we've done a lot of research around VMware and VMworld uh, in particular. We're going to get into that, uh, sort of what's next beyond just the hypervisor. But Stu, before we do, can you run down some of the news? We heard about uh, this thing called Evo today, and it's essentially converged infrastructure. A lot of questions, is, is VMware getting into the hardware business? What is this all about? Are they going after Nutanix and SimpliVity? Break it down for us. What was announced and what does it mean? Sure, Dave. So this is an extension of VMware's vSAN product line, uh, of course, that, that's been out for a while now. They had before what was known as a ready node, which was really a reference architecture working with some of the big server guys. And this uh, uh, new piece is called EvoRailT, E-V-O colon R-A-I-L. Um, I'm not sure how they came up with the name. Evo stands for evolutionary. I, I think you know, as, as you know, I think VMware, which really helped you know revolutionize a lot in the data and center, rail, is, rail, is, is showing the there. Um, basically, you're going to start building a hybrid converged thing by having rails. And their second uh, piece is actually they're going to come out with Evo Rack later, which is going to be the cloud version on it. So you think, think you you know rails, rails like means small Ruby because, on rails or no different? No, rails. no. It's really it's it's I've got four servers and I'm going to put it into a box okay. and uh, you know, so I'm going to use Rails to do that. Yeah, so we're talking to Sam. It, it, it's uh, definitely Green not a before. DevOps type Ruby on so Rails no, thing. So no HP, no Cisco in this. Yeah, so, so right, it'd be really interesting to see. Um, it is not a reference architecture, it really is an OEM solution. VMware's not getting into the hardware business. Uh, they are partnering with uh, an interesting mix. So you've got, uh, you know, Supermicro who does a lot of, uh, you know, these type of configurations, but then you've got Dell there. You've got EMC who most people don't think of as a server player, but of course they've sold you know, lots and lots of appliances for many years and will layer uh, other services from their st storage portfolio on top of that. Uh, and uh, th there's a couple of uh, Asian uh, you know, suppliers in there. Not the ODMs, Dave, but um, you know, small guys that uh, you know, are used to putting together kind of these custom configurations. And we, we touched on the Docker announcement at the, at the, the top of the production here uh, and the OpenStack as well. Although David, I want to bring you in the discussion. You said, okay, I like where they're going, but What's the but on uh, OpenStack in particular? You said, well, I'd like to see VMware be more, even more inclusive. Yes, uh, the, 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 the fundamental journey to that the VMware announced really clearly today is that it is a, uh, it is a hybrid cloud. Uh, and it has to be for many reasons. But the, the key is to be able to cover all workloads, all types of workload, and cover it at a cost that's uh, commensurate with the type of workloads that you're going to do. So you really want to be able to use OpenStack when it's the cheapest. Uh, you want to be, if you want to use VMware uh, for the very high end stuff, that's great as well. But you really want to have an open environment where you can use AWS, you can use OpenStack, you can use Azure as part of a hybrid cloud, not just VMware. Okay, uh, let's shift gears here, David. When you and I attended um, one of my earlier VM worlds back in sort of the mid to late 2000s, let's say, let's, let's bring it up to like 2008, 2009. You said to me at the time, wow, storage is really a mess in this world. And then so, <laughs> subsequent to that you know, sort of catalyst, and everybody knew it, everybody was yeah. complaining about it, VMware came out with this sort of set of APIs, the VAAI and VASA, and the whole ecosystem sort of scrambled to integrate, uh, and we've done a study, we at Wikibon, uh, talking to the Wikibon practitioner community, trying to understand how important integration is, understanding the integration points, and then helping people understand who was actually doing that type of integration. Um, uh, we've seen now Oracle, actually, Oracle Storage, hop on the, 
the VAAI and VASA bandwagon, so now you know it's time to, <laughs> to sort of move on to the next wave, right? Um, so, because it's, it's now mainstream. So what is that next wave? Right? You're not, you know, not updating that piece of it, you've moved on and, and now looking into a new area specifically around orchestration. So, so why and what are you finding? So, well, why do we do it? Because the key is this hybrid cloud. And in order to get there, uh, to that environment, you need orchestration, you need automation, uh, of your fundamental uh, provisioning and getting rid of all the junk work that is done in the data centers. And in order to do that, um, you need uh, to be uh, providing uh, the uh, capabilities from top to bottom, including storage, of just reducing the cost, all of the overall cost of that. And what we've been looking at is, what are the platforms that are in there providing that hybrid, hybrid cloud? And how in particular is storage going to deal with the, these environments? Uh, we, uh, storage is the most difficult thing of all. Um, and, and VMware have come out with, a, with VVOLs, uh, they come out with v, uh, vSAN very recently, and now with VVOLs, which is starting to try and make storage connect directly to the VMs and not with the LUNs and so the instead old of a, instead of an abstraction level of LUNs or yeah. volumes, it's yeah. now uh, the, the, the level at, at VM. So that's, you're talking about a, a, a wider sphere of capability in terms of storage services. You don't have to narrow it down to a, a volume or a, or well, a you, lung, you, is that you, right? you directly connect it to a VM, and an application can be an in a VM, and obviously what you want to do is also directly connect it to a, a, a set of VMs, uh, an application running across a set and of VMs And you can VMs invoke in storage way. services or any services uh, That's uh, the across whole point. that set. Yeah, right? you want to It's invoke. a lot easier to provision, is really yes. the bottom line. Well, it's not, even a lot, not only a lot easier but to, to manage provision, as well. But you can you can give that particular VM the precise set of services for that. So VM. it's a quality of service it's granularity. Quality of service. Yeah. Okay. Granularity. All right. So yes. now, so talk about what you're what you you've, so you've developed a framework working with the folks in the Wikibon community, which is a community of twenty thousand IT practitioners, to develop this framework to sort of evaluate a maturity model, essentially, yeah. of where we're at with orchestration, right? With orchestration and and the journey to the into the, into the hybrid, hybrid cloud. cloud. Okay. So yes. so the orchestration piece is all about efficiency doing more with yep. less, yep. automation, orchestration, yep. and hybrid cloud is sort of sort of testing all the marketing messages. That's right, right. where are That's we? Right. Okay, where so, are we? So, so what'd so, you find? So on slide one, uh, in, in the piece on the uh, Wikibon site, we're talking about the journey to the hybrid cloud, and uh, how far are enterprises along it? And uh, in the chart, goodness is to the right, and if you look at it, it's only virtualized servers which are far to the right. Everything else is really not that far along. Shocking, v VMware's good at servers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's right. If you look at slide two, what we're looking at is, what is the fundamental technology? I've chosen VMware as the, as the reference architecture here because they are the most uh, advanced in this area. What areas are to the right? And the things that are not yet on the right-hand side are things like virtualized storage and virtualized networks. They've done a lot of announcements with VVOLs, as we discussed before, and with vSAN to improve the, that virtualized storage. Obviously, Flash itself helps, so some of the Flash things they've done also improves that. But those two things need to be improved, and the uh, implementation of virtualized networks with NSX needs to be improved in order to be able to get the final VM tech, VMware technologies there. Once you've got those in slide three, then you're looking at uh, storage as a service. Storage that you can uh, apply to a fully automated storage provisioning and scaling and Provide, uh, provide it for all of the parts of storage, block, for file, for, uh, for, for um, object, uh, for big data. So the ones that are low on this chart are the APIs uh, for other platforms, uh, AWS for example, big data, 
uh, the HDFS. Again, those are sort of applications where you want to uh, be able to connect to that on a much lower cost basis. Um, public clouds and OpenStack. So those are the things that storage as a service is lacking. Those things are, are going to be put right. There's okay. some of it. So is this, is this right. the new sort of quote unquote battleground that we're going to see where people are going to have to spend engineering dollars um, over the next what, three, four, five years? A, and B, what does it mean for customers? So yes, in order to get to that hybrid cloud, those things have to be addressed. And at the moment, they're not there. Um, uh, for example, on, on uh, serv management services, consistency groups is something that really is not very good inside VMware, and other people can do a much better job. So, consistency groups, getting these snapshots working other as people a like service. Home. What do you mean? So you're talking, uh, you say other people. What, what uh, do you mean other people? Well, for example, like Actifio have a, a okay. very so good third parties, way, third sort parties, of competitors, okay, you know, yeah. other competitors of yeah. that sort, okay. uh, who can provide. Uh, consistency at the uh, application consistency as opposed to crash Okay, so, so what does this mean for the customer? Does the customer have to just sit back and wait for the vendor community to do all this integration? Or, um, or uh, uh, can they take other action? What, sh what would you advise customers in, in regard to this framework? Well, so the first thing is that I think the journey to the hybrid cloud is the only solution. Uh, alternatives of going just to the public cloud on its own, I think uh, ver very few people will be able to do that. Why not? Customer. Why not just outsource the whole lot? <laughs> the CEO say, "Come on, it's so much easier. Absolutely. Why do we want to be in the IT? Yes. Eighty-five percent of what we do is non-differentiated. Right. Just give it to Amazon. Why give not? It, give it all to Amazon. The the reason is that there are two groups of applications within your organization. Uh, there is a small group of very high value applications which need to run really well. And then there's the other big group of applications which are just supporting that. And to be able to outsource that uh, big group would be make sense if you could, and, and you could get the performance between the two halves. But when you look at the economies of scale of those important applications, they don't outsource very well. Okay, all right, so you said, I asked you about, I cut you off on uh, advice to customers, so, and we'll end there. You said you got to get to the hybrid cloud. Yes. Because that, and, and because that's a function of protecting your core assets, the yeah. family jewels, and lowering your costs for what Chad Sackage calls the craplications, right? <laughs> okay. That is exactly so, right. And that's really yes. what it's all about. That's, right? all, uh, that's what it's all about. So should, would, would you, should you start on this journey? Should you wait until this thing is baked out? What you should, should you do? You should start on the journey, because the key reason you should start now is that when you look at the where the value is going to come to uh, an organization, a small amount will go to IT. It'll certainly make it cheaper. Mm -hmm. But the real value is being able to get applications in faster, new updates in faster. It's the value of the applications to the end user. All right, so where do I start? If I'm a so customer? you start, I believe, you start with getting the business uh, on board with improving IT and improving their ability to take advantage of IT make it a business-led venture to get to that hybrid cloud and start now on the pieces that you can do, start getting the uh, orchestration in, start getting the automation in, and start making the applications much better for the, for the company as a whole. So it's the old alignment story. Here it is, 2014, Absolutely. and we're still talking about alignment. All right, thank you, David, very much. I really appreciate that welcome. framework. So I think you're going to be extending this over the next several weeks and, yep. and months we'll and digging that. into what different vendors have and so forth. So appreciate it. Stu, thanks for coming on. Keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back live from Moscone. This is VMworld 2014, and this is theCUBE.